why I like my bullet journal to be pocketable, so a pocket bullet journal, and how to go about it, because it's part of my EDC, so I want really to carry my notebook wherever I am. So whether you are starting a new notebook of your bullet journal, you've finished your old one, or you're starting a bullet journaling altogether, the question is a bit what size to choose. And the classic bullet journal comes in a hardcover A5. I don't have one here, so I can't show it to you. Um, but Leuchtturm 1917 is uh, having this cooperation with the founder or the inventor of the bullet journaling method, um, Ryder Carroll. And they are offering a bullet journal, size A5, um, in a hardcover. Um, it comes with a lot of nice features um, that help you writing um, a bullet journal. The great thing about a bullet journaling in general is that you don't need any of those features at all. It is just a nice, nice thing to have sometimes. Now, uh, my preferred size is the um, either the B6, but that was my first attempt. A B6 is in between A5 and A6. These are, by the way, um, more or less A6 size. Um, a B6 is really in between some bigger um, uh, A6. But I've, I've quickly experienced that this is just not pocketable enough for me. Uh, so it's a compromise uh, size, but you basically always still need to carry it in a, in a bag or a handbag, a bigger one, or a backpack, wherever. It's not really a pocketable format. Uh, the advantage of B6 as a kind of slightly smaller A5 is, of course, is uh, much lighter. Uh, just imagine the, the more or less the size difference between A6 and a, a I5 is always this double the size. So twice the size of an A6 basically is A5. And um, you can then just adding the grams, you will quickly see that while an A5 hardcover easily weighs around half a kilo. Um, a, A4, if you wanted to go for that really big size. Uh, in America, we would probably more or less call it letter size. Um, it is nearly a kilo, depending on how many pages you have and the quality of pages, etc. But um, the smaller you get, the lighter. Um, and um, A6 is half the weight, more or less, of A5. Uh, so I prefer really the true to size A6 or the A6 minus which is in between A6 and A7. A7 is wallet, more or less. That's a uh, credit card size. And uh, the, A6, uh, the, the A6 minus is just slightly smaller than an A6. Let me just show you the X17, which I'll uh, we'll talk about pretty soon. This is um, A6, more or less true to size. Now I take a drop book. Um, and if I fit it on top, you see that uh, there's a centimeter missing. So the pocketable ones, what is often referred to as A6 minus, um, the field notes, those types of notebooks, they are uh, narrower, and therefore A6 minus, and so much easier to put it in a pocket. Um, there are also some stuff um, that's nice to have um, as terms of features. So. Um, taking again the classic Leuchtturm 1917 soft cover A6, um, it does have a strap. So it comes with a strap, regardless if it's a hard cover or soft cover, they all have a strap. They have usually two bookmarks that are part of the notebook. They have this kind of naming thing, then they have a table of contents, and they come with page numbers. And of course, all kinds of grid. So this is dot grid. I really, really like dot grid. Probably in this in these light conditions, uh, nearly impossible to see. Um, they also have uh, perforated pages in the back, meaning that you can take off about 15 sheets or 30 pages. You simply tear them off. Um, those are typical. And in the back, you have pocket. So bookmarks, page numbers, table of contents, pocket, strap, and perforated pages. These are really nice to have, but not must-haves. The great thing about bullet journaling is that you can do without. They're just helping you. Um, and as when as I went with my choices, uh, I came across X17. 
Now, if I push these all aside, A6, uh, uh, X17 is about A6. Um, and initially I thought, hmm, I have then uh, two of these notebooks that are very thin, um, that each of them is kind of taken in one of these rubber straps, really an easy system, um, where basically you slip in uh, the notebook in one of these straps. It's an old known systems, uh, often used in these travel books, uh, but I think uh, X17 um, has has done a bit more perfectioned uh, version of it, a bit more pragmatic because they don't bulk up like these typical uh, travel notebooks that often just use one binder in the back. But I quickly actually, although this looks completely uh, is serving as my archive, I quickly switched to uh, a thinner version of the two notebook. And recently I thinned it down because I realized that if I uh, wanted to kind of um, reboot my relaunch, my bullet journaling uh, a bit more, I needed a slimmer version that's easily pocketable. And uh, I did a home job here, which is not as great. And of course, the other reason I did it was that I was pretty sure that I wouldn't be using the X17 notebooks anymore, because at least the old versions that I have, they have very thin pages. And I have switched to fountain pads, which I really kind of uh, love writing with them. Um, for fountain pens, you need um, paper quality, which is about 80 grams per meter, square meter. And again, Leuchtturm 1917 is this, what I would call a reference uh, notebook. It's really the one that most bullet journalists are referring to and probably have at least had it once in, in their lifetime. Um, I can only recommend that for beginners. If you know your format, if you know hardcover or softcover, this is the hardcover, Leuchtturm 1917. That is the name. Um, the hardcover is usually with 60 pages more, so it's 180 pages versus 120 pages um, in the classic edition of the A6 minus. They're not officially called like that. They put uh, the A6 a bit in, in inverted commas. Um, I think that if you are going for a pocketable format, if you're really looking for that everyday uh, pocketable notebook, the soft cover is much, much better. It, it kind of uh, folds and, and doesn't take as much uh, space as a much, much stiffer hardcover. However, because I used the X17, I really like the idea of having two separate notebooks. And one version of that is um, that I'm using the Jotbooks by Leuchtturm 1917. So they have the same form factor. They are slightly shorter, which is a bit surprising. There's no official reason why. And they're about a half centimeter, but officially it's nearly a centimeter shorter. Um, but otherwise, they're just two notebooks instead of one. Even price-wise, they're very comparable. They're slightly cheaper as one of these here. Um, they come in a pair. They, this is the black-gray pair. Then they have a greenish pair, a bluish pair, a reddish pair. The colors are a bit subdued. I prefer the normal um, black-gray covers. Um, maybe the reddish ones, but they're more Bordeaux, so they're not these bright. You have far more color choice, it has to be said, with the classic notebooks. There are a few other jot books where you can choose the colors, however, they're single ones and uh, I couldn't see any dot grid anymore. They seem to uh, sell them out and they seem just to keep the double jot books, as they're called, um, as their prime way of um, choosing these ones. They have a few less features, so obviously they don't have a strap. Um, but they seem to be really stiff because, of course, they are thinner, but they have a similar cover than the soft cover. Um, therefore, they feel th uh, stiffer. Um, the grid is slightly more pronounced, so it's actually um, much more contrast uh, dot grid. So if you want a more visible pattern, the dot books are anyway the preferred choice. You've got also perforated pages, but nearly half of them, nearly half of the book is uh, is perforated. So about the similar page numbers than this one here, but of course it means that you have a thinner notebook. So it's about nearly 50% of the whole notebook that is perforated, whereas here it's about 30-ish percent. You've got even a pocket. Um, it's, you see here, it's a kind of paper clip pocket, but it works, you know, for stuff like that. Um, I've got here some, uh, some, some 
I used this one here as my main uh, notebook for my bullet journal for a while, and this one here was the idea notebook. And I intended everything, you know, was as if it was going forward um, really nicely, and I was just looking for replacing my dot book. So, as always, I'm looking a bit around. I chose to use a fountain pen, so um, I came across looking for fountain pens and stuff by one of the dealers um, that had the sequence notebooks. And um, it really looked intriguing, especially with this round back. Uh, now, they, what irritated me at first was that I didn't find the right size. Um, I also read a few reviews that weren't that great about it, weren't that happy about the sequins, because they used fountain pens. But I found out also that there are two paper qualities. There's one at 70 grams per square meter, which obviously is not really suited for fountain pens. Um, but this one is the 81, and I don't have any problem, if any, I mean, this is just a test page, so there's no, um, I'm writing just, if I listen to radio or whatever, <laughs> then just often writing down some sentence which I um, have here. Um, but the, uh, the fountain pens are drying up, the, the ink is drying up really quickly. So I actually like this and prefer this slightly to the Leuchtturm stuff. I like the jot books, if I were making a kind of comparison. Um, depending on ink and fountain pen, it's in between those two. There's not much of a big difference. They may be slightly, slightly better um, uh, as a kind of average for more. Here you maybe have to be choosy a bit with a fountain pen and uh, the ink. Um, and this one here is the kind of, this is the standard. Um, and I think uh, if you're using a fountain pen, you don't want to think about it. Uh, many other manufacturers often, often offer sub-quality notebooks in that format, even the Moleskine brand stuff and in the end I think you will be much happier uh, for most of the stuff with the uh, Leuchtturm 1917. So, um, sequence, um, uh, I became a little bit of a, not of an obsession, but I, I was really interested um, because, uh, you know, some people really liked it and some people were not really sure about them. I also checked out the small notebooks, the field notebooks types, so, but um, when I got them, I quickly um, put them aside because compared to the jot books, these ones feel very similar in size, although they shouldn't. They, they should feel much slimmer. They are just um, uh, 24 page, uh, sheets, 48 pages. These ones are 30 sheets and 60 pages, so uh, significantly um, more pages, but they these feel really nicely bound or binded, um, whereas these ones here are the, the classic kind of notebook, uh, small notebook ones. Um, so just a big sheet that is folded up and then put together. They're really a bit disappointing, especially as they are these, these kind of innovators in, in this kind of round back. Um, and uh, 48 pages is really just for me, that's uh, too few in order to really be a bullet journal. This is, a couple of weeks and then um, you're done with them. Maybe not even. Uh, so um, I ordered this one here, no, more, more or less beca just because I was curious and I was actually thinking about these ones here. Um, but the more I looked at it, uh, especially when, it, uh, when I unpacked these, I really love them. I mean, I love the cover. So both of them have a very similar cover. Uh, it, it feels rubbery, neoprene-like. Um, very solid but also very very flexible and uh, you don't see any, any kind of lines here when, when you're kind of folding it up it, it's really amazing and actually i think this taupe color one is actually, it's very understated but i really like it so probably next time um with this uh, i wouldn't choose the yellow one which is very nice it's a mustard yellow i would choose the gray one uh, advantage is because then i already have this one i could use the yellow bookmark on uh, this really nice contrast on the taupe, but that's really for um, later. Um, so there are a few drawbacks with the sequence, or things that you need to know. All these little bujo features that are nice to have, you know, um, the bookmarking. These are my bookmarks. I I inserted them, so it doesn't come with bookmarks. Um, it does come with this magnetic bookmark but the magnetic bookmark is only as good. Hmm. So for example, I use the bookmark in the middle of the book somewhere. And then I'm writing, let's say here, and you feel the little 
it's just this little thing it's just thicker and it doesn't feel nice to write on it and you can have that everywhere so let's say you have a bookmark on early pages uh, for some collection or something and then you're on later pages you will have the same issue on these pages so it's a nice idea and i think for some pages it might work um, but for others i think the classic bookmark system um, is better that's why i use this one the other thing is it doesn't come with page numbers and that is a bit of a bother but on the other hand think about it bullet journaling is about going day by day after you set up your future log then maybe a few collections uh, the monthly first overview you going into today and then of course um, every day from there on you're not filling out stuff like in a classic calendar 10 pages ahead you're putting them in the future log and once you arrive at that day you're transferring it from your future log to your current day um, which is this great idea of kind of moving stuff forward and always checking out what have you done, what not, what do I need to migrate, as it's called, to the next day or move somewhere else. So page numbers, you can write them per day. So you don't need to have necessarily pre-printed ones unless you're referring to a section. Um, many people like to have collections somewhere and start them sometimes in the middle or in the uh, last third of a notebook um, and then they say you know from page 100 onwards um, it's now my trackers or my drawings whatever you know you, you want to keep separate from your bullet journal my suggestion is if you're having a sequence but even a normal notebook is rather than using a section is to just turn the notebook around and start from the rear and then here I would uh, I will start actually my collections and my ideas so um, and there are no page numbers marked, so I can mark them in a maybe uh, with a dot or something else so that I know uh, this is now the idea part um, or the, this is the normal part. So, and then at some point they will meet, but I don't know where they will meet. Sometimes I have more collections and more stuff that I put in ideas than my bullet journal, and sometimes it's the other way around. So I don't have to pre-plan how many pages to use because I simply turn the notebook around. You can use the same system, of course, in uh, Leuchtturm 1917, for example, with pre-printed pages. The only difference is that, of course, once you turn them around, um, you then have the page numbers the other way around. And if you open it here, well, it's the other way around. But it's still, you know, if you're not bothered by, by that, um, then you can use a similar kind of system. But with sequence, this is a bit easier to use. And what really sold me was the form factor. It's even shorter than the normal one. And for pockets, that every centimeter counts. And uh, even though it is thicker, it is, I think, easier to pocket um, in, in a small in, in pants or small bags um, because it's a centimeter less. And do I actually need a centimeter? For drawings, it might make a difference, but I think it's not huge. Anything smaller would make a huge difference. I tried with A7, for example, but that's really, really too small for me. But this size is, is uh, kind of okay. I tested it and I'm writing more or less the same amount of pages and stuff in there than I would do in this format and even in the slightly larger or true to A6 size, uh, the X17. So that's what I really tested. That's also how I chose to go for S6 anyway, because I realized that with A5 pages, I was not using much more space um, than I would in the um, A6. I was just you often writing stuff a little thicker, a little bigger, um, but I wouldn't lose any real estate that I really need on, a, on an A5. Um, but as you, as you see here, I go smaller and smaller, but I think you can't go really much smaller than this. Uh, anything smaller, it really becomes too small to use with the normal fountain pens. You will, here you can, depending on your writing, you can maybe put five words, um, or, or shorter words, of course, uh, together. But at some point it just becomes too narrow. That's why I didn't use A7. So all in all, um, what you have to also look out for sequence is that they do offer uh, different paper quality so they have a 70 grams and 80 grams this is an 80 grams and 80 grams as i mentioned before is important for uh, fountain pens so if you're using fountain pens you want better quality and i think even if you're using multi pens and colors and stuff you want uh, the slightly better quality 
Um, and also they're using, they're offering different A6 sizes, but the, they, they don't have a naming system for them. So you always need to look up the, the specifications, the measures, uh, and this is 9 by 14. Um, so I, I, I found a few other uh, sequence notebooks that I was really thinking, whoa, this looks nice, this looks nice. But they were never the same measures or with a different type of uh, cover system. They only had, they didn't have the dot grid, stuff like that. Or uh, suddenly it was the lesser paper quality, but it wasn't really prominently put forward. I really had to look in the fine print of the specifications to see it. And this is something that I would suggest to sequence, you know, just be a bit more upfront about the the really important things that for many people is the paper quality and really the form factor. Just call it something, call it A6 minus, the other maybe A6 or A6 plus, whatever. Or this is in a true pocket format and the other one is the handbag format, you know, um, ways to more easily refer to and look up the, the type of notebook I want. So I'm looking forward now, starting my new bullet journal with the sequence um, I think it's called color 9 by 14 with 200 pages um, and um, stopping my system at least for the moment with two notebooks uh, and choosing to use a version whereby I just continue on the back. Uh, last point uh, is about um, there is no strap so what I did was I found a strap here that works really nicely. So if you wanted to have a strap, um, this is some kind of strap that I took from textile uh, and then took it off. Uh, but you also can use, for example, reusable uh, cable binders that are my Velcro cable binders. I put two of them together and I sized them around. And so now they can be used with this one here and they can be I've put on the cover and therefore they strap nicely and I think it looks great. So this slightly contrasty uh, yellow with the sequence uh, bookmark, it really looks nice. Um, but the system actually I prefer is um, put it in a bag. So I don't need the strap, but for the sake of it, I put it in the bag with a system. This is a bag for glasses and advantage is here that I have my pens um, in the bag. Uh, and therefore I don't lose these things. So this is my pencil, very small, couple of grams really, an old stubby pencil. I use a, a rear cup, uh, I post it as it said, and thereby it then creates a really nicely usable a pencil. And as soon as I put it back, it's really a short stubby thingy. And I have my fountain pen that also goes in. So this is a Caveco Sport frosted natural coconut I think and it's with a calligraphy nib so really nice I love it played around with it and there's a bit of ink here already which is washable so the great thing about this is they're really pocketable they're really thin or small and really lightweight so they weigh about 15 grams um, and they fit in this bag really nicely so that's the way I usually carry and the sequence fits in that one so this will be for the foreseeable future my system to carry the notebook and put it in my jeans or you know if I didn't want to I could of course put it anywhere else if I wanted to it's really nice um, by the way all together for the weight weenies among us if you see guys it's 150 grams altogether, which is really lightweight. Think about it. A notebook is about 100 grams in a six size because this one's 200 pages or 100 sheets. This one is 127. This weighs nothing, two grams. Uh, and the bag itself weighs less than 10 grams. The uh, fountain pen is the heaviest part of that setup together with a notebook. It's 12 grams, so it's really nothing. Um, these ones here are to, uh, alone, just in the one, 53 grams, but I've got a few things inside, so let's call it 50 grams each. Um, this one is the classic notebook, it'll be about 100, yeah, exactly 100. Um, the sequence um, is about 120. So there we go, ah, I forgot the, this one here is a white lines edition, so it's probably a little bit 
heavier Bautisch, so it's 180 pages, 148 grams. So this one has more pages and is 20 grams lighter and more compact. Uh, so for people who really want a uh, number of pages, the sequence is really a, I think, very interesting choice. Um, but you need to know how to use it with the page numbers. That's the drawback, I think. But so far, I really like it. I, my test pages are really nice. I can't wait. Uh, within the next couple of days, I will have finished the Jotbook. Do, don't I like the Jotbook anymore? I do love it. I really like, like the, the Jotbooks. It's just that I'm so curious about this one, how it will, um, how it will use it and how it will work out. I think uh, it's got a very good chance of being a pretty long-term solution. Thank you and goodbye.